I think we hit the sweet spot where we are going to get the perfect data for Comet 3A Atlas. So last night was a clear night, a moonless night, also very uh, clear from the atmosphere standpoint. So it's a beautiful night to take pictures of Comet 3A Atlas. I sincerely appreciate all the support that you guys showed me and all the encouragement. Thank you very much for staying with me on the live stream. If you didn't join, that's fine. You can go back and watch to see what happened there. It is available on the internet, on the same YouTube channel. You can look up the YouTube channel and go to the live stream from last night. I might even go live today as well. I'm trying to set up this telescope. It's not working yet. It is actually touching the legs of the tripod. But the scope that I was using is doing a fantastic job. It has done fabulous pictures now. So I'm good with the... I don't need a bigger uh, scope. If it doesn't work, that's fine. Actually, this one is for a future video, like why I have this. And thank you again for the support that you showed, the generosity. They are all going here. So thank you very much. So I think we hit that jackpot. We hit that sweet spot. It, the Comet 3A Atlas came in so close last night to a point where it did reveal what it is truly like. The jets from the Comet 3A Atlas are not just wobbly, which is what I thought it was. They are very sharp and they are there in one picture on one side and the second picture on the other side. You will clearly see it, right? That's one thing that I noticed. The other one was the jets are rotating almost like a time-lapse rotation. I see picture one here, the jet, jet is here. Picture two, it wraps into the second picture is here. The same, the coma, smoke, jet, whatever you call it, is here and it is here in the next picture. So you can actually see the jets are kind of around the comet as if something is spinning in the front and jets are going and you will see the jets like that, right? So typically the reason why I wanted to highlight this is if it is an icy body, like comets that we normally see, if you heat up that icy body, what happens? It's like a block of ice and it just evaporates and it sends everything back, right? So, it may have multiple jets based on the chemical composition of those comets, natural comets, which is fine. Typically, you we can see that, but everything goes back and it's very clearly out there. It's a huge jet behind the comet, that's it. But this one, it's almost like a something is inside and closed and a hole that is projecting the gas out and there are multiple of them. Right? We don't know exactly the, the structure or the composition of what they are. It could be ventilations, right? Coming from similar to how, how our uh, volcanoes were there, right? The ventilations, it could be something like that. It may be a naturally formed holes or maybe openings where these gases are coming out through that vents and those vents are the ones that we are seeing it. We don't know, but it looks fascinating to see that close by. If available, I'll keep going live as much as I can until we can see the comet clearly. And it, when it starts becoming a small dot, all we can do is observe when it goes very close to the Jupiter. But for now, I think we have few more days we could actually closely observe this comet with a long duration time 
I'll share with you those pictures. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. Uh, please click on the like button and click on the notifications button. You will get a notification if you give me a like. Let me show you the data I collected. You will be fascinated with the data that I collected today. Okay, so this is the data we captured. I was just taking pictures of Orion and then we went into taking pictures of Comet 3i, I believe starting somewhere here, around 12 o'clock last night. So this morning, right, technically. And we took pictures all the way till 6.30 in the morning. And most of the data that we are capturing like that early in the night or early in the morning is not very good. The data that is really good is starting like 2 o'clock. So I took the data from, I believe, 2.30 to 6 o'clock. That's when that comet is picture perfect. And I star aligned those pictures and make sure that the pictures are good for us to see. Let me show you quickly the data. So whenever you're taking a look at the picture, it is going to show up something like this way. It's actually beautiful, by the way. And I'll try to zoom out and zoom in again. It's a long trail. That, that is Comet 3 Atlas, more traditional way of looking at Comet 3i. Shows up with some tail. If you zoom in, and the nucleus looks round. Yeah, it is looking like a comet. That's how it looks like. And then I took those pictures. Those are just the basic pictures to start off, right? And I looked at how far this comet is tracking and I cut that area, right? We, we know where the comet is starting, where the comet is ending. So that's the square I cut it. So this gives us a much better view of the comet. So let me make it as big as possible. So this is the trial of the comet and you can clearly see it started from the top. This is, these are the best images of this comet we can ever get. Okay, so I removed the noise from that point onwards and then I did a comet alignment. Removing the noise and removing comet alignment, we always do it for any comet pictures. Comet alignment, what it does is, you know, you saw the comet trailing, right? Comet alignment is going to make the stars trail and keep the comet in one place. You see that the last picture is not full, right? Because the first picture it started is full. And then as the comet is coming down, the stars are going up. So it removes the portions that are going up. Okay, you will see it once I show this. It's a pretty interesting way of looking at the sky. We are fascinated and interested only with our comet not the rest of the stuff, right? So, so if you are looking at this level, the comet in this place on the top, that's when it started, right? And then all these stars that are there behind, like almost like a sky, it's moving. The sky is moving behind the comet. So now what you're looking at is from the beginning till the end, the picture is full, right? I don't need to look at anything else. Our objective is to look at the comet. So we are taking a look at it. I'll zoom in as much as I can. This is quite an important and interesting data that we collected today. Okay, so I'll let you enjoy the time lapse first. So this has a lot of atmospheric 
thing going on in the back. So it could be weather atmosphere. It could be also a wide coma around the comet. I cannot start making sense out of the data unless I take that out for now because that's not going to help me understand more about the comet. So let me close this for a second. I took the data, went to each one of those pictures and I made them like dark sky, right? So that way you could see Okay, now it is looking a lot better, right? It's looking like a dark sky in the back. You're looking at the comet. That the object to really now is to focus all our attention on the comet, not anything around. And let me run the time lapse again here. Now what you are looking at is probably the fantastic images that we have ever taken of Comet 3 Atlas. December 19th, early hours. I don't think we can ever beat this data. You could watch these pictures for hours and there is no end to it. Technically, this is not a comet unless you expand the definition, but there is a lot more to it. I'll show you that. Okay, so now since you saw that, I'll go back up and I'll start going one by one. You see the first picture like this, right? And you see the second one, the, the tail is poof, it is going, right? And I want you to pay close attention. I will, I will not zoom in more than this because it may not look good. Now there is a lot of smoke on the top of this. Right now you see a, a bit of coma here and then in the next picture it becomes flat. You see that? I'll zoom in here for you. This is, coma is going like this. Next picture, it becomes flat. Zoom out again. Yeah, this is what I was telling you. You see that when you are looking at this picture, I'm going back a little bit. You see right here, this area, right? This area. I'm going down from picture one, let's say to picture two, right? I'll show you here so that it makes more sense. Next one, next one. You see that it wraps around and you see that quite a bit. I'll go back. You see that? Again. You see that? I'm just going back and forth between those two frames. This In this area, you can actually see the effect of the spin. See that? If you spin something, right, you see that like this is the area where it was like trying to, the, the smoke or the jet is going around, right? Do you feel it? It's doing that again. I'll 
will keep going down. This is another one of those places where I wanted to go one by one so that you get a sense out of these pictures. See, the angles are changing. This is another one that I was telling you. This is... It is doing it. Just between two pictures. There is a lot more to it. See that? This is a clear direction change. This You can make a note of this number. It's 74 and 73. So 74 and 73. This is literally 60 seconds apart. In one picture, you're seeing this. Other picture, you're seeing this. There is a jet here, there is a jet here on the side. 74. No, it's not in the same place. You see that? This jet right now is right here. So I'll put the edge of the jet here, like with my mouse. This is where 74 is. And 73 is over there. You see that? 74, 73. And thanks for your generosity. Please do click on the subscribe button, notifications button, and the like button. When you press the like, when I were, whenever I post a new video, you will get a notification. Thank you very much for watching. A clear skies.